Hello again. Now we're going to start tackling the real reading passages in our book in Unit 1, Fake News. The objectives of this unit are it will enable you to critically evaluate news. It will also help you distinguish between fake news and real news. And it will show you how to use critical tools to verify news. But first things first. There is a saying in English that goes as the following. Not everything that glitters is gold. What does that really mean? You need to remember that we use our critical thinking skills all the time it, in interpreting anything. And not everything that really glitters is gold. So <clears throat> let's make a guess whether the pictures we're going to see are real or are fake. Hands of God. What do you think? Do you think that this is a real picture? Can you see the hands in the sky? Do you think it's real or fake? It's actually fake. And why is it fake? Because the hands are too perfect. In our experience, we have never seen perfect shapes formed by clouds. So, we will actually make use of our experience to say if this is true or fake. Black and white twins. What do you think? Is this real or fake? Well, it's real. Because scientific fact tells us that if we have a mixed marriage, we can actually have mixed babies. And these wins are, act, are a result of a mixed marriage. Satellite photo, space shuttle tragedy. What do you think? Fake. And why is it fake? Because it defies logic. It is illogical. How was the picture taken in the first place? Somebody must have been floating in the sky to take this picture. What about this beautiful canyon? This colorful, beautiful canyon. Do you think it's true or false? It's real. It's a real picture. And how did I know that? And why am I so certain about it? If you look to the bottom, there is the citation and there is the name of the canyon and where actually I can find the picture and more information about the canyon. That is the reference citation for the picture verifies the truth of the picture. So what do you think? How do we make the judgment? Think about how we make this the guess. We use our past experience like we have seen what we have seen before like like we've seen in the hands of God picture or use our logic and argument is this is this logical or illogical or use scientific facts like the mixed babies or if we're not sure what do we do we require more evidence so we look at the citations and make sure that what is what we see is real or fake by going back and checking the source these are exactly the same skills we use when we try to make when we try to make sense of what we're reading. When we are reading something critically, we use exactly those same skills. So it's something that you actually do naturally, but when you come to read the text, you just seem to turn off your critical judgment and start reading for the surface. Now we need to be looking deeply at text. The first text is called Living in the Fake News Era. Have you heard of fake news before? Do you know what fake news is? I think fake news 
is one of the main reasons we really need to enhance our critical reading skills. When we read, there are three stages of reading that we go through. Number one, a general understanding of the text. Number two, we start analyzing the text. And number three, we pass a judgment. We evaluate the text. It's our personal judgment. For the general understanding, we ask ourselves things like, what is fake news anyway? Do we understand the vocabulary? Do we understand the writer reference citations, the references that he's uh, using and using as evidence? What are the types of fake news he's talking about? Do we already know about them? Have we heard about them before? How does fake news spread? Is it like, does he tell us how it spreads and what happens? And all of the answers for this is actually found in the text. So what is fake news? Fake news are, st are stories that aren't true. These are deliberately invented stories designed to make people believe something uh, false to buy a certain product or to visit a certain website. Fake news are stories that have some truth but are not 100% accurate. Now, let's look at the vocabulary. Have you heard of the word jargon before? Every topic or subject has its own vocabulary that you may not be familiar with. We call this jargon, that is, special words or expressions that are used by a particular genre or a particular field or profession. Like, for example, when we talk about medical jargon or legal jargon, or in this case, when we talk about media jargon. So, what's a scam? What's a hoax? What's a scoop? What is deep fake? What is doctored? If you cannot guess the meaning from the dictionary, from the text, please look it up in your dictionary. Reference citations. And this is what a writer uses as evidence. They're important to prove that the writer is using real evidence, that that is, he or she is not making up stories or stating facts that are not true. References need to be reliable, that they are, they are one of the most important criteria we use to judge if what is being said is true or fake. Like remember in the canyon picture, it looks fake, but it is really true and there was a reference there that we could check. So we can see in, in the text we have just you have just read, there are a few references, like, for example, when the writer says the research can be found at and he gives us the website or article available at and he gives us the, the website. This is what we call reference citations. And this is what the writer uses to make sure that we believe what he's saying and to verify and justify his argument. Now we move on to text analysis. What issues is the writer focusing on? Does the writer take a clear stand on this issue? What is the writer's purpose for writing? Who is the audience for this writing? Does the writer seem to assume readers will agree with his or her position? What evidence does the writer use to support the central argument? Does the writer include enough evidence? Look at those questions and look at the text and try to answer the, uh, these questions based on the text you have just read. Let's try a few together. For example, according to the article, who is the most affected by fake news? And how does the writer support this? We, the, write, the article says, surprisingly, it is the elders of society that are the least cautious. A recent study found that those aged 65 or over are 80 times more likely to share bogus news. The research can be found at, and 
here is the website where we could actually click and go and find the whole research. So the article is based on scientific research and the, and that's the evidence he's using and he gives us he gives us the reference to this research so that we can believe him that people aged 65 or over are the ones that actually share share the most another example is when the writer gives the example of Ramses the Great is he stating a fact or giving an opinion he is actually giving us a fact. He uses a lot of historical facts and gives us dates. In fact, you can go all the way back to 1274 BC and find evidence of fake news. Ramses the Great invented the story following the Battle of Kadesh. He told his people that the result was a big victory for the Egyptian people. In reality, the battle was a bit of a dead end with no clear winner. He even reinscribed monuments dedicated to the achievements of others so that historians give him all the credit. So these are facts. He's not he's not telling us what he thinks of Ramses the Great, but he's stating facts about Ramses the Great. And this is very important to notice because we cannot actually uh, if the writer is giving us an opinion, then we need to know that this is his or her own personal opinion. But if the writer is giving us facts, then we need to verify that these facts are right and that they are not fabricated. And finally, the third stage of reading is out passing our own personal judgment, evaluating the text, reflecting about the text, and saying what we really think about the text. So, do you agree with the author about the rise of fake news? I personally agree. Have you ever been a victim of a hoax? I think many of us have. And then we get more personal, asking questions like, was, was there something you disagreed with? What was it? Why did you disagree with it? Remember, if you're keeping a reading journal, you can write all of those things in your reading journal. You can write in it what you disagree with, what you like the most, what you think, how you feel, how the article makes you feel, and, and why do you think it's a good or a bad article. But the question now is, how is fake news created? If we know how fake news is created, we can actually then identify if a piece of news is fake or not. There are seven types of mis and disinformation. Fake news is based on disinformation, that is, information that is altered or parts of it only are being said. There are seven main techniques used to produce false news. Number one, satire or parody. When we make, when we make a parody or when we satirize something, we're not really saying the truth, but satire and parody do not have an intention to cause harm, but has potential to fool us. Two, misleading content, that is, content uh, used to frame issues or individuals in a way that is misleading, not in a real way. It, it, there is, they give us part of the truth, but not all of the truth, so that when we, uh, when we start reading on, we, we, we form a judgment about a person or a situation which is based on misinformation. Number three, imposter content. When a genuine source are impersonated, that is, when we, we can, for example, there are fake news websites that pretend to be BBC, or when uh, somebody says, like, I have read something on 
or hurt something in this or that place and uh, but this or that place does not exist or if somebody pretends to be somebody else and makes a statement based on somebody statement which is not true finally and sorry number four fabricated content that is content that has no truth it's designed to deceive and to do harm it is fabricated it's all made up number uh, five false connection that is when headlines or visuals or captions don't support the content when i put a picture that is actually has nothing that's very appealing but has nothing to do with the content of the story or when i write a title or a headline that is very exciting that draws the attention of the reader yet whatever when i read inside the article or the the piece of news it has nothing to do with the actual title then the there is another technique which is false context that is when genuine content is shared with false contextual information if i say uh, many many times we find stories that are circulating on social media and then we realize that this story was based on an, an incident that happened years before or it happened in a different place many times we see pictures of uh, for example when there was the storm we saw a lot of pictures that were actually not true because they were pictures of a different place. They were not pictures of Cairo drowning in water. But there is also manipulated content, and that is when genuine information or imagery is manipulated to deceive. That is when pictures are made to look real, but they're really not real. When pictures are made to look real, uh, but or videos are altered and there they use there is a lot of technological tools that are used to actually create this fake news or these doctored and deep fake videos and pictures okay there is an exercise in your book that you need to do to practice noticing fake news you have five pieces of fake news and there is and you don't need to find out if they're true or false yet but you need to read them and decide how how why are they fake what was the technique used to create the fake news after you read those five pieces of news you need to fill in this fake news matrix decide why the uh, those were fake news was it satire or parody was it using misleading content was it using imposter content was it using fabricated content was it false con uh, context were, were, or was it manipulated content you do this by ticking the box in front uh, and uh, in front of the number of the of the piece of news and and whatever techniques you th you think are used you just tick this box and next time this is the, going to be the first thing we do we're going to check your answers together and make sure that you have the correct answers but also there is a few uh, websites that you need to go to and check if what is being said is true or is fake and tell us why these are true or these are fake so until next time please read the text answer the questions and be ready for for our next meeting inshallah bye bye